Today, I want to share with you a checklist system that I've created in Notion using buttons. So essentially, what I've done is with every project that I add to my database, I have a recurring list of to-dos. So I have a checklist for every project that's pretty repetitive. It's the same to-do for each project. I may add more or tweak this list depending on the context of the project, but I have a recurring checklist that I need to keep generating for every project. So once Notion's newest feature buttons came out, I wanted to create a system where I was able to create these recurring checklist items inside of the database itself. So essentially for every new project I add to my database, all of the recurring checklist items I need to complete for that project to be completed will also be added to the database. So you can download that template down in the description below or you can download a follow along page to follow along with me. Let's just get right into it. Let's assume that you are a Notion template creator and every project that you have is to create a new Notion template for your audience or for your customers. So every project here could have a list of recurring to-dos like First, you want to make the databases, then you want to make the page templates, then you want to make the dashboard, and then you want to launch that template. Maybe the make a dashboard to do also has sub items like adding page elements to the dashboard or writing documentation. We are going to recreate this markdown checklist and we're going to implement it into a database system. So first, let's just create that database by going forward slash list. I'm going to create a list view and create a new database down here. And this is just going to be where all of our projects are. So let's name it my projects. Now, the next thing I want to do is go into one of these pages and take a look at the default properties Notion gives us. They give us a created property and a tags property. I'm going to delete by clicking the title, both of these properties. I'm also going to remove this comment section by going to the page menu. This is totally optional. Going to customize page and then going to top level page discussions and turning it off. Okay, so the database properties I wanna start with here are just some basic to-do list properties like a checkbox. We'll call it completed for when the task is done. I'm also going to create a date property and call it due date. We could also change the date format here. I'm gonna change it to month, day, year. Great, so that's just all we're gonna work with here. It's gonna be a rather simple setup. So let's say, for example, just gonna delete the other two pages. I'm going to select this edit button next to my first page. I'm gonna rename this academic planner. So that's our first project. What I also wanna do is go to the database menu here in our list and go to properties. I want to show my completed checkbox and my due date. I'm just gonna drag completed down to the bottom here so that it is flush to the side. Also, if I go back to edit, I can add a due date, maybe for tomorrow. What I can also do is change the icon of this page from here by clicking this document symbol and changing the icon. Now, how do I implement these recurring tasks? The first thing I wanna do is go back to the database menu and select sub items. What sub items are going to do is create an outline structure. And we're just gonna keep the default names here, sub item and parent item. You'll notice that there's now an invisible toggle that I can select and add a new sub item within. Now if I select that, I can type in the first checklist item, which is make databases. 
and then add another sub item, make page templates, make dashboard. And then there will also be an available toggle for this sub item to add sub items to sub items and so on. And we're just going to replicate this add page elements to dashboard and write documentation. Toggle that away and another sub item for launch template. So now we have our to do list. We're going to take this a step further and we're going to create a button that automates these sub items. So we don't have to keep writing them out. All right, so let's create a button. At the top of this database, I'm going to go forward slash button. Let's call this button new project. So every time we have a new project idea, we're going to generate it through this button instead of straight through this list. I can even add an icon. In this case, I do want to add, maybe I can look for a circle and the plus sign inside of circle here. The first step I want to add to this automation button is to create a new page. So let's go to add page two. And we're going to select the database my projects. It should be at the top of the list. But if it's not, you can go ahead and search for it. And the name of this new page that I'm adding, let's just say, new project title. And we'll name it once this automation runs through. The next thing I want to do is add another step that adds yet another page to my projects. That states the first checklist item make databases. So make databases. And I'm going to edit another property for this new page. I'm going to edit its parent item. So make databases parent item is going to be the new project. And we just created that page up here in step one. So when I go to select the parent item, the first option with a blue highlight should be new page added in my projects, which is referring to this first step here. I'm going to go and duplicate this action, duplicate below, and I'm just going to rename this to the second make page templates. Do that one more time for make dashboard. Now for the make dashboard sub items, add page elements to dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again except this time the parent item is no longer going to be the new project, but rather make dashboard, right? So if I go to parent item again, it has four options for me to choose from. The first being the page added at step one and the last being the page added at step four. I'm gonna choose that last one down here. I'm going to duplicate below again and do that second sub item, which is write documentation. Again, the parent item is going to be from step four, make dashboard. And then the last one's going to be to launch the template, which will have a parent item from step one. New page added in my projects. The last step I want to do is just open that new project page we created so that we can give it a new title and give it a due date. So I'm going to go to the option here, open page at the end and select the new page created in step one, which should be at the top of this list. And I'm going to open this up in a center peak, but I could choose to open it in side peak or full page as well. So this is my total finished automation. Press done. If I go to press that button, it should send me to a brand new page, 
which says new project title, and I can change that. Maybe this template is called affiliate tracker. And the due date is the 16th. If I click away, you'll see down here, we have a new project with new sub items. That is our recurring checklist. Okay, so let's do some finalizing. Obviously, if you have a list of projects here and you clicked through, maybe this one is completed, made the dashboard, you've launched the template and you're all done. You want a way to archive old projects. But before I do that, there is one way that's really easy. What you can do is simply add a filter from here, go to completed and just say completed is unchecked and you'll see that that finished project has disappeared. Simply click on list view and duplicate. Name this archived. Go to filter again up here. And just make sure it's the opposite. Completed is checked. And we'll see all of our archive tasks here. Now, one thing I don't like about this, let's just pretend that this isn't completely finished. Go back to the list view. Now, this is what you'll see with this type of filter. Let's say I'm done make databases. You'll see that the item has completely disappeared from the list. I don't really like that. Again, this is personal preference. I like seeing all of my subtasks checked off. I like seeing that progression visually. You can fiddle around with the filters here, but this is my favorite um, use case, especially with the buttons. I'm just going to go and create a new property here. That is a select property. I'm going to call it archive. And just add an option here called archive and create it. So it'll look like that. And then what I'm gonna do is create a filter here that instead of saying completed unchecked, just clear that. Go to add to advanced filter. I'm just gonna change this to archive is not archive. And then in archived, the filter is going to be archive is archive. Let's create a new button over here where I can manually archive finished projects. So it's not going to go over automatically to the archive section. I have complete control over that. Forward slash again button. I'm going to say archive 100% tasks. Click this icon. Maybe I can give it a slash circle. And the step here is going to be edit pages in. We're going to edit pages in my projects. What I'm going to do is just edit pages and we have a filter option here to target certain pages. In this case, it's going to be all pages that are completed. So all tasks that are done, let's target those and then force this archive select property to show the option archive. Okay, so now when I'm done this project and I've completed everything here, I can force an archive. So archive 100% tasks, and then it will go over to my archive section. What I would also do is hide this um, database title. Hide database title here, same with archived. I think it just looks neater. And I could also add a sort, sort due date, ascending for both views. 
And that's it. That is my checklist system. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is definitely a system I wanted to share since the buttons came out and I didn't get a chance to do in my buttons video. Let me know down below if this is something you want to use or are already using. And I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.